So now we come to the question, is overstretching bad? And merely by the amount of times I get asked this, people inherently know that overstretching is not a great idea, but because they're seeing it around them so often, they're thinking, well, maybe I should be doing that. So the first thing is, what is overstretching? And a few people may have differing definitions of this, but as far as I'm concerned, overstretching is taking a joint past its physiological range. So if we look at the hip, we have the pelvis and then your femur. It is designed to have a decent range of motion. So we can flex, we can extend, we can externally rotate, we can internally rotate, we can abduct. However, if we are going into extension, say taking the leg into a degage, we want the head of the hip to roll in the socket, keeping inside the socket. If we are taking it so far back and letting the hip shunt forward in the socket, this is going to push forward on the labrum that is starting here. And in some pictures, you can actually see the ball of the head of the dancer or gymnast hip popping forward out of the socket. This is not a great idea. So the extension component is not necessarily the bad thing, it's more the shunting of the head of the hip in the socket. So we really want to make sure that when we're working into whatever position we're working into, that we're keeping in mind where the joint is placed. Now, a lot of parents say, well, if she doesn't feel any pain, surely it's fine. And my response to this is usually, well, if you gave your daughter a chocolate bar once, does she get fat? They say, no, that's fine. Say, so how about if she ate 25 a day for the next 10 years? It's a cumulative effect. So often dancers won't feel it at the time, and especially young dancers who haven't yet learned to really feel what is going on inside their bodies. They won't notice what's going on. However, the tissues are actually in a pretty vulnerable and delicate state when we're going through all of our growth spurts. So we want to make sure that we're not setting them up for any issues long term. The other thing that we need to keep in mind is that a developing pelvis, so anything under the age of 18 to 22, will still have a Y-shaped cartilage in the hip socket. This is designed so that the acetabulum, the hip socket, can grow as the head of the femur grows. It's not a solid hip socket. So if we're pushing a lot of strain through the pelvis, while that is still cartilaginous, we can change the shape of the hip socket. This is not necessarily a good thing, and I've seen some radiographic evidence where we've actually done damage to students' hips by having them in programs that are encouraging overstretching over a period of time. Now, what should you feel when you're going into stretching? So you should feel gentle mobilization of the tissues that we're trying to mobilize. So we may feel mobilization of the fascia through the front of the hip. You may feel a quad stretch, hamstring stretches. Those kind of things are quite fine. What you should not feel when going into any positions is any pain in the joint. So if you are going into second splits, perhaps, you don't wanna feel any pain deep in the joint or compression around the back of the joint. So I always ask dancers, what do you feel? Can you point to what you're feeling and can you describe it? They will place their hands on. If it's a big muscular stretch, they'll kind of slap their hand on. Often they will point deep in the joint and we want to pull back from that. That's not a safe stretch. We don't want to be pushing into anything that feels like it needs to crack. Whilst a crack may feel good short term, over time this creates more instability around the joint. It may also be damaging the ligaments on the outside, making them more lax, making the hip more unstable over time. We also don't want to feel any radiating pins and needles, numbness, any referral down the leg. That usually means that we're either stretching or compressing a nerve. So making sure that their experience within the stretch is safe. You may have five dance students who will look the same on the outside, but they're feeling a completely different thing within it. So it's really important to empower them to know what to do if they feel a certain sensation. Now, the other question that comes up is, well, she wants to be a professional dancer, so surely this is part of it. No, not at all. We want to achieve general mobility throughout the body even mobility, and mobility through the soft tissues, we don't want to be changing the structure of the joints. We've actually discovered that whilst in full-time dance, there is a high level of hypermobile dancers. By the time it gets through to being at a principal role, that proportion is massively dropped down because if we encourage hypermobility too much, that leads to an increased 
risk of injury due to instability. So we really want to teach those hypermobile dancers to control their joints, to contain their joints, so we are working on the tissues that should be moving rather than overstretching the ones that shouldn't. Now the other question that I often get when it comes to stretching is, is PNF stretching okay? And for me in adolescence, the answer is no. In adults, it may work really well and it can be a wonderful technique. So PNF is meant to be proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. It's designed to be a very gentle contraction of some tissues taken into range and then as we release we can gain a little bit of range. I find this works great on adult students, however we need to keep in mind that anyone under the age of 22 will still have their secondary growth plates active. So this is up around the top of the ilium and especially down on the bottom of your sit bones. Where your hamstrings come in and attach is sitting right on around a growth plate. So if we're doing contractions around there during a period of growth, the risk of getting an avulsion fracture is high. Now, if you're doing the correct technique, this will never happen. So if it's being done by a therapist who's been well-trained and is doing it perfectly, then it's okay. However, what I see being done as PNF stretching in classes is often very aggressive and being pushed too hard. So as a blanket rule, I tend to say no partner stretching, no PNF stretching in students, especially under that age of 18 to 22. The other thing that we want to think of is why is it easy for some people and why is it not for others? So if we think about the hip again, some people seem to be able to take their leg up and behind the back of their head with no problems whatsoever. Others will struggle and it will seem a physical impossibility. And this is because it is. So what we've discovered is that most people have a little ligament that attaches from the top of your femur into your socket. Yeah? This doesn't give much stability, but it actually supplies blood to the head of the femur. Some people don't have this. So we've discovered that in a certain percentage of people, they may rupture it either when they're a fetus inside mum or very early on in their development. And it seems that if this is ruptured very early on, it doesn't cause too many problems, but the head of the femur is smaller and they have a normal sized hip socket. So this means there's a lot more movement. It's easy for them to move it around. They can go into extreme positions quite easily without feeling like they're risking breaking anything or tearing anything. The issue with this is that they are also predisposed to early arthritis. Because there is so much movement in the socket, they'll often have breakdown of the cartilage in the socket and be looking at orthopedic surgery earlier on if they're not taking care of their hips. In these individuals who can do those positions, we need to keep them out of it. We need to teach them how to stabilize the hip in the socket rather than maximize and take advantage of all that extra range. For most people, as they take their leg up, that ligament will be placed on a massive stretch. If they are pushed or are trying to encourage their leg to go there, they may risk rupturing that ligament at the head of the femur. Now this is super important because if the hip is used to having that blood supply through to the head of the femur, if you suddenly lose it, then we can have problems with a little bit of bony necrosis or the head of the hip dying. We've actually seen this in 13 and 14 year olds more recently as this overstretching has become commonplace. So just because you can doesn't mean you should. When you've got students with excessive range, please do not encourage them to use it, encourage them to not use it as a party trick, but in order to get them to stabilize, we need to go through all the deep hip conditioning to help save their hips and keep them dancing long-term so that they're deciding to stop dancing when they want to rather than because they can't because they're in so much pain.